Okay, today we got a little bit of a different video. I'm in the office today. Um, just uh, wanted to touch base. A lot of you have sent comments on uh, some machining videos and uh, some electronics videos. And I wanted to just mention, uh, wow, you won't see a lot of that this year. Um, for those that don't know, there's a, basically a global chip shortage right now, um, worldwide. Uh, so you can't really get silicon. Most of my CNC uh, work is on RF enclosures or electronic enclosures. Uh, so obviously the two come hand in hand. Um, here's kind of a <laughs> several articles. Uh, you know, if you do chip shortage, uh, basically you see lots of stuff um, about the chip shortage. So I wanted to go, kind of talk about it and kind of maybe show what it, what it affects on my designs uh, and how this might affect you. Because uh, in the end, I think it'll, it'll get more and more uh, prevalent on how it will affect just about everybody uh, around. Um, so this right here, I'm going to pull up a design that I have uh, that I did a whole series on. And that's this HC uh, control. Um, this was a Razor Mux control. Uh, and it used an STM8 processor, which is a really cheap part. It's less than a dollar typically. Um, and it, it sits right in the center of this board uh, and pretty much runs this controller. So if you can imagine pretty much any refrigerator today, uh, DeWalt tool, um, any basically anything that probably takes batteries uh, requires some of the silicon to work. Uh, so you can imagine if you can't get any of those uh, to manufacture, how that's going to affect uh, basically everything. Um, and I'm not even going to mention, uh, you know, more complicated silicon, like what makes your cell phone work, what makes the cell tower work, et cetera. Uh, those are in relatively short supply as well. And I'm going to kind of give you some examples here. Uh, so this is the design for that board. Um, and again, you know, this uh, part here is an STM8. Uh, the, I, I can still get a small quantity of the FETs that were on this board, uh, but nothing uh, to do like a production run or anything. Uh, but I can't get any of the STM8s at all. So if you're not familiar, uh, this site is uh, Octopart. And what Octopart does is, well, they do quite a bit of stuff, but the main thing that they do is they'll show you stock at, uh, on various part numbers at the various suppliers. So we're just going to check here. This is an STM8 S207. Um, and it do really doesn't matter the part number at this point. Basically, if you notice here, all of the stock has been depleted. Uh, you can't get any of it. The bigger problem is this is not a problem that's going to go away quickly. Um, if you look at uh, this part, and we're going to go, uh, Mouser usually does a really good job about doing lead times. Um, so we're going to take a look at the lead time on this part. Uh, so they have 690 on order, which basically means they don't have any in stock. And we're going to click to detail. Um, as you can see, uh, this is listing 44 weeks, which is actually a lot shorter than most. Um, that's getting close to a year. Most parts are a year or longer out, and you, you just simply can't get them. Um, so. Imagine if you're a you know a manufacturer or a hobbyist or uh, you do R and D work like I do, um, you just can't get parts right now, and it's going to continue probably uh, into uh, 2022. Uh, so big impacts, um, you know. Like I say, if you're if you're in this in this realm or you're trying to get uh, chips to play with or uh, do designs, etc., uh, be expecting that. I think that's going to come to a, a complete standstill for the next year or so. Um, another product uh, that I have, I have a Mux. Um, I preemptively ordered uh, six trays uh, back in December. Um, I did get those in. So I have about um, of things that I actually make and uh, sell to people. Um, I have uh, approximately 18 months of supply. And then if, if it doesn't come back, uh, basically, I just won't make that, that product anymore. And that's one of the things um, that I do use a CNC. For the whole enclosure, uh, everything is CNC. Um, I've already basically manufactured all of the enclosures. Uh, I have all the boards in stock. I have not pick and placed that particular 
product and that's just basically a, a larger version of that mux product that uh, i did for the razor it has more inputs and outputs so to prepare basically i've tried to purchase what i needed for 18 months or longer um, and i've actually manufactured probably 95 percent of those um, i kept some parts to the side uh, for repairs or changes or uh, any returns not that i've ever gotten any but it could happen um, so I'm going to pull up one of those. That's, that was based off the STM4 series. Um, so we're going to go back to Octo part here. And we're going to just take a look. I mean, zero stock, no stock whatsoever. Um, that particular one was like the 405, 407 series. So we're going to look at a 405 here. This may not be the, that, that probably is the right part, actually. Um, we're going to look and see what the lead time is on that. Um, how many they have on order? So they're uh, they have 533 on order or 538 on order uh, with a factory lead time of 45 weeks, um, which is uh, a very very long time. Um, so MCUs uh, across the board, it's not just an STM thing. Um, you really can't get any stock of anything. The only really thing that I've found that I may kind of switch over to especially for the STM-8 because I do have designs I want to do. Um, I'm just not going to be able to do them with the STM-8 because I can't get stock. Another option uh, is uh, microchip. And the reason I say that they're the option, I think they're the, I think microchips is really one of the only ones that actually has, one, they sell direct, and two, they... Um, they actually have manufacturing here in the U.S., uh, which has not totally isolated them from, you know, long lead times, etc. But um, I have noticed there is some stock of a lot of their parts. Uh, so something to consider. So how is this going to affect everyone? So if you can imagine, um, I'm just going to see if I can pull up uh, a photo of this real quick. Uh, Ford trucks. Maybe this is it. Oh, yeah, there we go. So um, basically, thousands of Ford trucks are basically sitting at Kentucky Speedway. This is on uh, May 8th, May 9th. Um, and they're waiting on semiconductors. Uh, they could be sold, but they can't actually function uh out on the roadway because the semiconductors don't exist to actually populate in the truck and get it running and if you can imagine this uh you know everything from your you know, your dewalt tools uh, all of those use brushless dc generally and have a, quite a bit of electronics and silicon in them um, those are going to be impacted um, you know if you your coffee maker breaks and you have to go go get a new one those are going to be impacted um, I expect that a lot of, uh, especially like new phones that are coming out are going to be delayed simply because even if they can get their main uh, CPU module, they won't be able to get the other subsystems underneath. They won't be able to get the silicon. So that's just something to think about and kind of uh, why you, you haven't seen and probably will not see a whole lot of content. Um, other than what I find out, if I, you know, obviously if I find out something new, I'll try to pass it along. But um, it looks like we're in for a rough patch of at least a year as far as, uh, you know, design work and um, product in general. Um, I think I'm good for what I do. Um, like I said, I, I've tried to prepare and have stock for about 18 months, maybe longer. Uh, but I won't be doing any new work. Uh, so just something to think about and uh, some tools. Uh, Octo parts are a really good one to kind of look and see, you know, how that part's doing. Um, really, the only intel that I have is that I have discovered that uh, microchip in particular. Um, let's see if we can just find some information on the, on them. Okay, so this is the Wikipedia page. Um, obviously, they have uh, they're headquartered in Arizona, 
and they have wafer fabs located in Arizona, Oregon, uh, and Colorado. Um, they have assembly facilities in Thailand um, and a couple other places that are nowhere near here. Um, but the important thing is, is what's short right now is the, the wafer production. For those, those of you that don't know, um, when a manufacturer orders chips, uh, typically it's it's about a four to six month um, delivery date. So if you decided today, hey, you know, we want to do uh, 20,000 of these chips, the manufacturer would order them from the wafer facility and four to six months later they would arrive. Um, now, a lot of times they, they would arrive either as wafer and have to be assembled, which may take additional time, etc. cetera. Um, but it's not a short lead time thing. And that's, that's one of the things that's come up is basically um, all the stock was purchased up. Uh, the planning or availability uh, wasn't in place. And now we have this huge uh, vacuum of silicon, uh, which is a big deal um, for... Someone that, uh, like my mainstay um, is is R and D. So basically, I'm you know doing new designs, uh, playing around, and also do it as a hobby. Um, a lot of these chips, the MCUs, RF chips, uh, FETs, high side switching, none of that stuff is available right now. You can't order it. Uh, you're probably not going to see any of it for uh, a year. Uh, so you can't even really build prototypes or test. Um, so big impacts to that uh, sector. Um, and then that, that trickles up into actual manufacturing and actually, you know, being able to go to Walmart, being able to go to Amazon and buy these pro finished products. Uh, in my market, I'm, I'm mainly R&D prototype small run stuff. Um, so it does affect me as well because this small run stuff is used in important things. Um, you know, I've got a little dabble a little bit in the racing market, a little bit in the industrial equipment market. And that's going to affect those end products that people buy. And there's not another source. It's not like, you know, you can go to someone else and get them. They just, nobody has them. Um, if, and, you know, my, my thinking on it is if, if Ford and these big, huge conglomerates are, are, are have manufactured um, trucks without uh, knowing that they were going to get silicon, obviously there's kind of been a failure of the supply chain there. Um, just in time manufacturing is probably very, very negatively looked upon right now, um, at least from a supply chain standpoint. Because if you were doing just in time and relying on being able to order electronic components just at will and get them in and, and use them in your product, those days are gone. Um, so anyway, just uh, just an update video and uh, just kind of you know what to expect this year. Um, I'd have plenty of other content that I can do. Um, but you won't see a whole lot of design stuff unless I'm just playing with something. I probably won't actually be able to make anything real this year unless I've already got parts for it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. And, uh, you know, please comment on, on down below if you have a source for some of this stuff or have a different take on it. Uh, be sure to leave a comment. And as always, like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.